Musician Jimmy Page has owned some incredible and historic homes, two of which show what a great appreciation he has always had for living in beautiful works of art, created by architects. Today we're going to showcase his amazing home known as Deanery Garden, which he purchased in 1998. Welcome along fellow time travelers and strange historians. This time around we're going to travel back in time to check out some of my favorite photos of Deanery Garden. You're going to see some really cool snaps, some of which you may have never seen before. Before I begin, please like and share the show and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. Now please join me around the campfire. This is Sonning on Thames. It is a charming village nestled along the banks of the River Thames in Berkshire, England. It's located about an hour and a half directly west of London. The riverside location provides not only scenic views but also opportunities for leisurely walks and boating along the Thames. The village's green spaces and tranquil atmosphere make it an ideal retreat, offering residents and visitors a respite from urban bustle. It is a testament to the enduring allure of English countryside living. As you can see, it exudes a timeless appeal with its historic character and scenic beauty. And it is steeped in history. In fact, Sonning's roots trace back to the Saxon era, about a thousand years ago. The village's architectural landscape is a delightful blend of quaint cottages and more substantial period buildings. In the vicinity lies the brick-built Sonning Bridge, spanning the Thames into Oxfordshire. The first Sonning Bridge is believed to date back to 1125, although it was rebuilt in its current form in the 17th century. Nearby is a historic timber frame structure that originates from the 1500s, which is the location of the Bull Inn. It was initially under the ownership of the Bishop of Salisbury and served as lodgings for pilgrims visiting the adjacent medieval chapel of St. Andrews. If you've ever been to the Bull Inn, please let me know in the comments below. It has a timeless charm that showcases traditional architectural features that transports the visitors to a bygone era. St. Andrew's Church is a historic landmark that adds to the village's cultural and architectural richness. It is renowned for its impressive collection of church monuments and it holds significance as the successor to an Anglo-Saxon cathedral. Bordering the churchyard, discreetly concealed by high walls, is Deanery Garden. And this is the location of Deanery Garden, also known as the Deanery. The residence is located within a former walled orchard that was purchased in the 1890s by Sir Edward Burgess Hudson. Born in 1854, he was a prominent British publisher and the visionary founder of Country Life magazine. Hudson's significant contributions to the publishing industry centered around his passion for promoting the charm of rural living and the British countryside, which swiftly gained popularity for its high-quality articles and lavish illustrations showcasing country houses gardens, and landscapes. By the way, if you're not familiar with Country Life magazine, you really need to check it out. Hudson aimed to celebrate the elegance of country living and appeal to an audience fascinated by the English countryside and its lifestyle, which, if you're listening to this right now, probably includes you. In early to mid-1899, he employed Edwin Lutchens to provide a survey and plan for the proposed house and garden in the property he bought. Sir Edwin Lutyens was born in London in 1869. He was a prolific and influential British architect who was celebrated for his diverse body of work that spanned the late 19th and early 20th centuries. At some point prior to hiring Lutyens, Sir Edward Hudson introduced him to garden designer Gertrude Jekyll, and so she was employed to design the gardens. Now at this point, you might be wondering who in the world Gertrude Jekyll was and am I pronouncing her name correctly? You know you think that I'm supposed to be saying Jekyll, don't you? Trust me, I looked into it. It ain't Jekyll, it's Jekyll. Well, at least that's how all the snooty people pronounced her name, so I'm going to pronounce it that way too. Born in London in 1843, Gertrude Jekyll was a preeminent figure in British horticulture and garden design, who left an indelible mark on the arts and crafts movement. Collaborating extensively, with architect Edward Lutyens, their partnership produced some of the most iconic gardens of the era, emphasizing the integration of color, form, and texture. Notably, Jekyll's designs often featured herbaceous borders, which became a signature element of hers. 
Incidentally, one of the many gardens that were designed by Gertrude Jekyll include the current home of musician Eric Clapton, which later also became the home of his wife, Patty Boyd, who, as you know, was formerly married to George Harrison. Okay, now, do you like coincidences? Or do you believe we live in a computer simulation? Check this out. Fast forward to 1927. This is Plumpton Place. It is located in Plumpton, East Sussex, England, about a couple of hours south of London. It is an Elizabethan manor house that was built in 1568 on the site of an earlier house. In 1927, the manor caught the eye of Edward Hudson, who acquired the property. Recognizing its state of disrepair, Hudson embarked on a significant restoration project, and so he enlisted the services of Edward Lutyens to refurbish the main house and mill house, while Gertrude Jekyll was tasked with overseeing the transformation of the then 60 acres of land and lakes. Now fast forward to 1969, the estate changed hands when a doctor acquired it, after declining a previous offer from George Harrison of the Beatles and his wife Patty Boyd. However, three years later, that doctor sold Plumpton Place to Jimmy Page, who held ownership of the property from 1972 to 1985. Pretty cool, right? And if you want to learn more about Plumpton Place, you can check that out in another one of my shows. Now let's fast forward to 1998. While living at the Tower House in London, Jimmy Page purchased Deanery Garden. Considering Jimmy Page could have purchased any estate that he wanted to, after all he is rolling in dough, it makes one wonder if perhaps he had his mind set on Deanery Garden. After all, it was created by the same three people, all of whom played such prominent roles in the restoration of his beloved Plumpton Place. Now I'm going to show you some of my favorite snaps of Deanery Garden. By the way, if you want more detailed information of the house and gardens, please check out my show where I read the 1903 Country Life magazine article about Deanery Garden. This is a view of the ancient boundary wall that surrounds Deanery Garden as seen from the street. This arched doorway is the main entry to the residence. When the door opens, you can see the cloister way that leads to the house. But before going into the house, you can look to your right, and you can see that there is a courtyard with a fountain. And on the other side, to the left, is a lavatory and water closet. And to the right is a place to store your bicycles. Through the cloister to the east is a garden on the side of the house. This is a view from the front door looking into the house. On the left is an oaken staircase that leads upstairs. Walking forward towards the back door, there is a sitting room to the left, and on the right is the hall. This snap was taken from the north, so we can see the enormous fireplace to the left. You can see interior windows, and the double doors lead into the hall, and on the other side is the sitting room. And there's a view of the hall from another angle. And there's a view of the hall 
with the windows to the left and the dining room straight ahead. Looking at this floor plan, you can see the location of the original pantry, the kitchen, storage for coal, scullery storage, larders, a place to store your boots, and there's even a water closet for staff. Upstairs are the bedrooms, and above the pantry is a gallery with a fireplace. Bookshelves were later added along the wall. The windows to the side overlook the court at the front of the house. Now let's go outside. This is a view from the back door between the hall and the sitting room. And here are some views of the house from the south, including some images while the house was nearly done with construction. This snap shows the pump court on the east side of the house. To the left can be seen the cloister way, leading to the fountain court and the entry to the house. This map shows the pergola from the northeast. And this map shows the pergola from the south. This map shows the south side of the house as seen from the upper terrace. This snap shows the south side of the house with the orchard steps in the foreground arranged in a semicircle. And this snap shows the view from the croquet lawn. This snap shows the end of the water garden. And this map shows the stone edge channel that runs from the water garden to the terrace along the south side of the house. This map shows a cluster of roses flowing down from a brick wall next to stone steps. This snap shows the grass paths in the orchard. And here are some additional snaps taken in the garden.
At this point, I'd like to remind everyone that Deanery Garden is a private residence, and to please offer Mr. Page, or whoever lives there at the time that you hear this, the respect and privacy that the owners deserve. So, what do you think of Deanery Garden? If you were rolling in dough, would you live in an incredible place like that? By the way, I do not know who took some of the photos that I've shown in the show, so if you do, will you kindly let me know so I can respectfully give them the credit they deserve. At this point, I'd like to thank you for joining me on this time travel adventure to check out some of my favorite photos of Deanery Garden that was purchased by Jimmy Page in 1998. Kindly remember to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell because there will be more shows like this one, and I hope you check those out too. Please check out the links below to learn how to support my research and productions. Specifically, I'd really appreciate it if you could become a member of my channel and or join me on Patreon. You could also leave a super thanks in the comments below. Kindly be kind to all non-human animals and please don't eat them. They don't like that. Remember, for the benefit of compassion for all living things and their own health, all of the beetles and other brilliant people throughout history chose a plant-based diet. And please do yourself a favor and go to a local shelter and adopt a cat or a dog. You and they will be very glad that you did. Until next time, I wish you safe travels on all your journeys.